Hey, welcome back to Home Studio Pro. I'm so glad you're here, and thank you so much for the support you've shown this channel so far. In this video, I'm aiming to do two things. Number one, remind you that my very favorite pair of recording headphones are these, the DT770s by Biodynamic. But I'm also here to guide you through and help navigate the decision you might be making about which variant is right for you because they do make this headphone in three different models, the 32 ohms, the 80 ohms, and the 250 ohm version. So which one do you pick? Well, the answer actually is pretty clear when you read deep in the manuals of Biodynamic. They've got explanations, which I will translate to you here, but I'm also making this video because, yeah, I literally own all three variants, a pair of each. I use them for different things, so as much as I will be rate, uh, reading straight from Biodynamic, I also have firsthand experience that I want to pass along and help you make a recommendation of which version of these to get, depending on how you plan to use them. So let's begin with the 32 ohm version. Here's what Buyer says. The 32 ohms DT770 Pro works great with computer sound cards, audio interfaces, portable recorders and players, mobile phone, tablet, handheld recording devices, etc. Units powered by rechargeable batteries or external supplies, also with instruments like a digital piano, synthesizer, or instrument amplifiers, example for guitar. So a lot of low output type devices is essentially what Buyer is summing up right there in the 32 ohm version. By the way, ohms, a measure of impedance, which we will discuss in just a second. So hang tight for that. The DT770 Pro with 250 ohms is suitable for stationary sources like mains powered studio monitor controllers, hi-fi amplifiers, headphone amplifiers, etc. Both versions, 32 and 50, by the way, that's why I've done these back to back. Both versions, 32 and 50 ohm, 250 ohms, are based on very low mass, so-called underhang voice coils, which can reproduce enormous details with low distortion. For the lower impedance, we use slightly thicker and less wire for the coil, therefore it plays louder with lower supply voltages, right? The lower impedance has lower resistance, less to go through right there, uh, with lower supply voltages from mentioned units, as the 250 ohms version. So they're designed similarly, only in the resistance part are they different, right? So 32, 250, and again, we'll be explaining impedance in just a second. Now the 80 ohm version is just a little bit different based on the description here. 80 ohms DT770 Pro is optimized for very high listening levels in a recording studio. For example, musicians playing an instrument, etc. You normally can find very high power headphone amplifiers here and achievable level is more important than the last bit of sound quality. This transducer uses an overhang voice coil, which is longer than the air gap. Its larger surface increases the electrical power handling, better cooling, but its higher mass results in a different distortion behavior. Right, so this one's got a totally different design, 80 does, rather than 32 and 250. And again, I know you're you're thinking about buying one of these. Number one, how will you power them? We'll talk ab about impedance, I'm promising that. Uh, but the design itself is different. 32 and 250 are more similar than their cousin of 80 ohms, which isn't exactly what you would expect, right? You would think maybe 80 and 32 are alike or 80 and 250 are alike because they're next to each other, when actually 32 and 250 are the most alike. Okay, so the takeaways, 32 and 250 are similar. I'm here to tell you that 80, in my opinion, in the frequency response, now these are very flat headphones, that's why I prefer them. They replicate an accurate sound. They're not hyped or boosted. I mean, they give you a full representation of the sound. They're not overly done on the top or bottom end at all by any means, as opposed to other headphones, which I've tried, owned, and worn. I'm here to tell you, though, that I, I do feel like the 80s are even more flat, maybe even a bit less flavorful than the 250s and the 32s. Now, there are physical difference. I'm only talking here about the actual sound, but here's what I really need to pass along. 
beyond how they're powered, right? Beyond the resistance, the impedance. These are only very minor sound differences. The uneducated ear may not even be able to fully differentiate between the 32 or the 80 or the 250. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, after using all of them a fair amount of time, I love the way these sound. These are my favorite, the 250s. And the ones that sound most like them are actually the 32s, not these ones, the 80s, which I use for a totally different purpose. But again, closed back headphones for recording situations, you're trying to get an accurate gauge of the sound. I suppose you could use these for mixing and mastering, but I think you'd rather have more of an open back. I use the DT990s for those. Minor differences here, but there definitely are some differences. But now we get into the important part, all about impedance, right? Because you technically need the drive to get the volume out of your headphones. There's two different things here. There's the amount of drive coming from whatever you're plugging your headphones into. If it doesn't have that, that good, that high power of a drive, you want a lower impedance headphone. The reason I can wear these, the 250s, is because I have a headphone amp right here. It's literally powering these and it could power a 600 ohm pair of headphones. These are only 250. The point is you need something high powered, the high powered output to power these headphones. Whereas the 80s, you know, they could do from a computer, a laptop, or even a mobile device, they could do okay. But 32 ohm will work for pretty much everything. And then you can turn the volume down. You know, sometimes when you really need to crank the volume on something and it's still not coming out loud. Yeah, that's because your impedance of the headphones is too high for the output, the drive of the device that's playing this, this source. So the drive is one thing. The volume is a different thing. I want to make sure that we're very clear on that. You need something powerful to drive these. You need something moderately powerful to drive the 80s and pretty much the 32s will work on just about anything. So know your source, right? Know the source that's powering your headphones. And lastly here, cranked isn't best. If you, ha if you have a low-powered output device, right, your, your audio interface, your computer, whatever it is, it doesn't put out that hot enough of a signal. But you're thinking to yourself, oh, I've got to get the 250 ohms. That must be the best, right? Biggest number. That's what Brody's using right now. That's not necessarily the case. To crank the volume all the way up, for a high high impedance headphone and just barely get enough sound that's not the best that's not that's not going to drive these two speakers of the headphones best what you need is a much lower impedance so that you don't need to crank the volume that's going to give you the best sound the fullest sound in your ears to have the proper impedance headphones for the output of the device you're using so cranked isn't best if you're saying well I'll just put it up to 100 every time and and just get enough volume that I need. No, you're not going to get the best sound that way. You need to know it. Okay, in terms of physical differences here, I don't have the 32s. They're somewhere else right now. But I actually also like the way they're built. All of these robust, I mean, literally professional quality like design, which, by the way, hasn't changed in many decades. I think since the 80s, these have been around. I think these are products of the 80s. I mean, quite honestly, they still kind of look like it. But they'll last, like they will perform like it too. The 32 ohm headphones have a straight cable, right? So the, the 250s here are coiled, but the 32s have a straight cable. It's a shorter cable than the 80s or any other one. It's also got kind of a, a rubbery texture. I'm talking about the 32s here versus this 80, which has kind of more of a plastic cable. So I like it. I like the straight shorter cable on the 32s. Again, you might be using that with your phone, plugging it in. So you would want a shorter cable. It's got a rubbery cable. Also, the 32 ohm version has pleather, like plasticky leather ear pads, more conventional than these velour ear pads, which are on the 80s and the 250s, which we'll get into in, in just a second. So that's the physical differences of the 32 ohm version. Uh, these are the 80s. They have a straight and just much longer cable. In fact, Quite honestly, I'm here to tell you that I think the cable on these 80s <laughs> can be getting messy here. The cable is too long. I think it might be somewhere like around the six to eight feet mark. Um, I think, yeah, I would prefer if this were a bit shorter. Quite honestly, I'm a coiled guy. I like coiled. 
but I understand that you may be using these in a bunch of different scenarios. So they put a straight cable. It's a really long cable. It's the longest of all three. Uh, and by the way, these do come with the velour head pads. They make whitish gray ones. They also make these black ones, which obviously won't show oil or sweat stains or makeup if it rubs off on your from your face to your headphones or whatever. So uh, I prefer the dark ones just for the on-camera presentation. But these are the velour pads on the 80s. And then the physical differences on these, the 250s. Um, like I said before, these have uh, a coiled cable. Where can you see it best there? Yeah, the coiled cable. Uh, it's also uh, medium length. It's definitely not as long as the 80s. And um, it's a bit, I would say, it's a bit longer than the 32. So it's probably right there in the middle. These also have the velour ear pads, which I should tell you. I've had these for about three to four years now. And I, I'm not feeling like they're wearing out. But I wear them every day. And I'm starting to feel like it might be time for me to replace them to kind of get the fit and the feel fresh all over again. And that's another great quality about these Biodynamic DT770s. Every single part of these headphones is replaceable. You can buy the part for everything. You break it, you sit on it. Oops, I've done that with these. No problem. You can replace every single part. So you don't need to worry about your investment going away entirely. If something bad happens, you can fix them. So yeah, I love the 250s. I love the 32s probably probably second best. And it's not to knock the 80s. These are great. I would highly recommend these. I'm just here to say that if you've got the high power output, go with the 250s. If you just have a laptop or a phone, go with the 32s. So yeah, what would I do? That's why you're here. You've waited this long for the answer. What am I recommending to you? If you're using a headphone amp or you have access to one or an audio interface or something that you know can drive a pair of headphones uh, like these, the 250s, get the 250s. The price is not different, really. It's negligible. These are the best ones that I've used, and I'm, I'm happy to use them here with my headphone amp. If you have no amp or you know you have a low-powered output device, or even if you're not sure, or even if you think you might be using these headphones across a variety of different output sources then go with the 32s. You can always bring that volume down, right? It's much better to have a low you know, volume if it goes up to 100 and you're cruising at 20, 25 and getting a good volume on your 32s because they don't need much drive to power them. That's fine, right? Versus the alternative, you've got it cranked to 100 and you're still not getting enough volume out of these 250s. So using an amp, get these, the 250s. If you have no amp or you're not sure what you're going to do, get the 32 ohm version. And if you're trying to just meet it in the middle, if you're stuck on you know, numbers, uh, the 80 ohm version, I guess, is fine. I'm, I'm just here to say they have a slightly different sound profile, uh, which is not my preference. These ones just seem to have more of a low end. I think that's probably the bigger difference, in my opinion. And I've, I've seen others debate that online. I've seen others tell me I'm flat out wrong, but I, I own all three. I uh, use all three. I think I know all three. Uh, so it's not a knock against the 80, but for me, I'd probably stick with the 250 or the 32s, depending on how you're going to use them. But overall, can't recommend these enough. The DT770s by Biodynamic. Hopefully now these versions, these varieties make sense. And eventually check out my other video on the dt 990s, those are the open back headphones, right? Which I would not use here for recording because sound leaks out the side of them. Got the closed backs here in the home studio for that. But those are my favorite for mixing, uh, editing, and mastering. So 770s, 990s, great combo. Uh, hopefully this video provided you some value. If it did, consider giving it a thumbs up. And hey, since you're here on the channel, which I really appreciate, subscribe to it. I've got lots more great stuff coming out right around the corner. And I'll see you then.